Okay, so today it's August 24th, Friday, 12.46 p.m. I had some thoughts that I want to share with you guys, and this is sort of not a technique-centered video. These are my thoughts about YouTube astrology and how is astrology changing and shifting because of this modern world we're living in. And uh, So this is a talk about YouTube, social media, and doing astrology in 2018, you know, in this modern day time. It's, I just, I've been wanting to make a video about this for a long time, and we're just going to see how this goes, because it's kind of really hard for me to convey a lot of these things, but I just know that a lot of you guys must be feeling this too, or must be thinking about this as well. Um, I made some notes here. Yeah, so if you've been studying astrology since before 2012, you might remember that, you know, before around 2012, or 2013, around that time, there was nothing on the internet about astrology, about Vedic astrology at least. There was like nothing. Um, the only thing you would find would be these copied and pasted things. Like you would, you would be looking for Mercury in the first house. You would Google that and you would just find like six articles that are all copy and pasting the same thing from one book that you've already read probably if you were really into astrology. So for those of you who don't know, that's how it was before that time. And then around 2012, this explosion of astrology came on the internet and 2013 and yeah, it just became like all these and same with a lot of like YouTube gurus and things too. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm talking about astrology here. So astrology, it was like, really blew up. Um, but before then, that wasn't going on. And people were getting great readings before then. Um, so so keep that in mind. Now, I'm not trying to bash uh, social media or YouTube at all, because they're great tools. I wouldn't be here talking to you if I didn't think that they weren't. So they're great, and they have a great practical purpose. And I think that they're useful and they're here for a reason and they're, you know, they should stay or a similar format, a similar thing should stay. And the internet is wonderful for archival purposes, particularly. Um, and the internet has saved more paper than any recycling plant, right? So I'm all about uh, moving forward. You know, I'm an Aquarius swamp show. I'm all about progress and development when it is in a wise way when it is done wisely. And that's again like that last video I made, Jupiter and Mars is wise progress. You know, Mars is about progress, Jupiter is wisdom. So you put those together and that's so good. That's what we need. America is obsessed with, the whole modern world is obsessed with progress now, but is it wise progress? You know, are we working smarter or are we just working harder? And so I just want to that's what that's what matters to me and that's what an astrologer should do he should be able to guide you and ways of living your life and accomplishing your goals that may not you may not have to change your goal you just to go about it in a wiser way now um youtube has been great for this you know so youtube has done a lot it's uh it's 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 wonderful for a lot of reasons um let me just say that first but it is not the way that jotish was traditionally taught and there are long, long lists of the qualifications of a good astrologer in the Vedic books, like uh, Brihat Samhita or all these different books that go into, you know, Varaha Mahira just extols all these qualities um, that, the, that the great uh, astrologer must have. Telling the truth, this and that. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot. Uh, I remember looking at it being like, wow, there's no way anyone I know could could live up to all this. But nowhere in that is it listed that the astrologer must be a wonderful businessman, a wonderful marketer, and that he must be wonderful with social media. He must have a great YouTube channel with X amount of subscribers. You see what I'm saying? He must say, please like and subscribe at the beginning and the end of every fucking video. I'm sorry, but that's just ridiculous, okay? Pardon my French, but you know, you gotta, you gotta really wonder. I, I cringe if I, I, I think I asked, like, I said that once or twice when I made my YouTube video channel a year ago, please like and subscribe, and I inwardly just cringed when I said it. I was like, why did I just say that? Ugh. And I, yeah, so, so I don't care if you like or subscribe my videos, you know? That's materialistic, and that's a materialistic viewpoint, and how can you be a real astrologer and be really spiritual 
when you're looking at life that way. No, you're a materialistic astrologer. You're not a spiritual astrologer. Um, that's just what I've how I've come to see it. I don't mean that anything against anyone doing that. I'm just trying to bring this point out because it's what I think is true, and I'm trying to discern this. But I love I love like everyone doing astrology. So there are certainly friends of mine who have said that stuff, and I'm not you know I'm not trying to bash them or anything. But this is just how I feel. Um, yeah, I, I just feel really strongly about this, you guys, and it's hard to convey, like, there's just something wrong, there's just something wrong with, with the world right now, with the astrology world, in the terms of YouTube and marketing and social media, it's this disgusting kind of, like, rat race, you know, I talked to an astrologer who's been, he's, like, 60, he's gone, he's going through his second Saturn return now, and he's just telling me, like, man, I, he talked to some other mutual people, did talks, uh, did some videos and, and courses and stuff with other colleagues of mine. And he was like, you know, it's just crazy how, you know, I talked to this other person, this person, they all feel like they're just, they're all in this race to the top, you know, of this imagined astrology kingdom or world. And they're all just kind of like clamoring to get to the top of that. And like, why, you know? And, and that's something that if you've ever been at the top of anything, or if you've ever been actually that person who had all the attention, it's not that comfortable. It's not that enjoyable. It's not that fulfilling. It's lonely at the top. That's the truth. That's why it's a saying. The, being the king, you know, is ruled by the sun. Well, that's a cruel planet. It's a cruel job. It's not, it's not the, that's not the sign or the planet of enjoying life on earth. You know, that would be the queen, the moon, or Venus, or it's, there's many other ways you could look at that. But So that's just something to think about. Um, the best part of astrology is the study of it, the knowledge, this wealth of wisdom. If you, if you have money in the bank or not, I don't care. You have, if you have astrology, you have wealth. You have knowledge and real wealth. And, you know, um, there have been times, like last summer, I was doing very... I wasn't doing that great financially. I was having to eat like ramen noodles and things and just barely could spend any money on food and do a lot of expenses and things and just could seem to keep it up. Um, and that was when I really realized, wow, you know, I'm actually so happy and so fulfilled because of what I know and what I've learned and everything is okay. And I grew so much through that. I, I don't know. There's just, there's just something that Anyways, I don't want to I don't want to digress too much. So, social media and YouTube is in many ways a trap. Is all I'm saying. It, like it's it's kind of a trap for validation. Um, and if we're yogic people, we know that looking for validation is essentially looking for more suffering. Um, then once you get it, you're happy. Then you need more of it. And then when you don't get it, you're sad. We can also look at this technically. I know I didn't say this with a technique center video, but why is the 11th Lord always considered evil in all of Joy Tish traditionally? Can you think of what the 11th Lord represents? It represents social media or groups or trying to seek validation, being impersonally validated by a group or the public or something. That's the 11th house, like getting a degree or a title is the 11th house of titles, right? Well, that's when an impersonal group validates you, says you're good. So the 11th Lord is evil because looking for that is not what life's about. And you can look for that your whole life and you can be freaking the most famous person in the world, the most titled person, have all the accolades and still not have gotten the real point of life and still not have maybe been va validated your own self, we could say. So that's a trap. All right. And um, I just want to say that, you know, so so this. Uh, it's just weird because astrology is, an, is innately something that it's spiritual or it's going to lead you to spirituality at some point in your path of studying it. Kapil's been talking about that a lot. Like over the last year, uh, the KRS channel, he's been talking about so much how he just, all he thinks about is God now and you know, he's just so much more, it feels like he got somehow spiritualized through the studying of astrology and it's very true. It's very, very true. Also, Kapil said a lot about the same thing, about how before 2012, there was like nothing on the internet about astrology. It was all just these copied and pasted things from like the one book. And let's remember that the planet that makes you good at marketing is mainly Mercury, the merchant planet. The word marketing literally comes from Mercury. Market, mercantile, all that comes from Mercury, just so you know, etymologically. So 
Mercury is the planet of business and commerce and being a good businessman, hustling, buying and selling. But that is not the planet of doing the right thing and is not the planet of uh, wisdom. And Mercury actually is the planet that starves the planet of wisdom, Jupiter. Jupiter sees Mercury as his enemy because of this reason, because of all this rajasicness, all this marketing, all that stuff can actually just make it harder to see the truth of life. Also, Mercury is the enemy of Mars, the planet of sattvam, your strength of character. Are you doing the, the right thing? Are you a pure, good person? Are you a strong person? So, the stronger Mercury is, on some level, the more it can in, in, interfere with that, okay? And there's been, I've heard lots of stories of these, of really, really big names doing very, very questionable things. I'm not going to bring up anyone, though. And, and that's not, you know, what I want to do, but there have been a lot of unethical things that I've heard of being done and questionable things I've heard of being done. But I must say that in the, in the YouTube guru world, it's even worse and it's much more scary. Um, just leave it at that. Um, and then, so here's the other angle of it is that if you are a really good astrologer, you probably are booked up at least a few months out. I mean, I've, uh, I mean, even back in like, before I ever even had a YouTube channel, I was booked up two months out back in like 2015 or 2014 even. And so if I'm just, yeah, like if you're really, really serious about doing readings and, and, and making a living off this, then it does not matter whether you have a YouTube channel or not. People will freaking hear about you. You know what I mean? All you, like Ernst, my teacher, he says, all you do is one good reading. If you can do one good reading for a person, they will certainly refer you and mention it to other people. That person might get one or they might mention it to another and so on. And you just don't do a bad one. Just only do really good readings and be very serious. And so yeah, I didn't do as many back then and I took a lot more time to make sure I did a really good job. But I was doing great readings for people without having any of this marketing stuff. All I had was a website and I, that was it. Um, the best astrologers, like I'm saying, are too busy to post things on Facebook. They're too busy to go on YouTube and make videos. Um, yeah, the be you know, uh, the worst astrologers are the ones who are posting things on the internet every single day on Facebook and even starting conflicts or, you know what I mean, or just like being kind of just rajasic, you know, and looking for attention and validation and stimulation and... I just look at that and I just wonder, like, how much time are you actually spending, like, meditating, studying, you know, scripture, studying the Shastras? How much time are you actually, like, going through techniques, doing charts for actual clients? You know, like, if, if, you have, if I see every time I go on the internet, you're on there too, like, you know, on the Facebook thing or something, I just, I just kind of wonder. Um, and it's... There are, and it should be said that there are different types of astrologers. There are some astrologers who are naturally just going to be more uh, in the rajasic world, and that's good, and we need a wide array of astrologers, but I just want you guys to know that I think that you guys should be aware of all this and know and be able to discern and discriminate, okay, this is a very uh, rajas sort of more astrologer. This is a good astrologer for um, for those sort of things maybe or for – for some sort of specialization is all I'm trying to say. Um, and there are a lot of people who want more of like a superficial pop culture-y side of, of astrology that don't really want to go that deep into it. They don't really want to know what they're doing wrong in their life and they don't want to be told that and they don't want to be told what to do because they won't do it either way. They just want to keep validating their own ego. And so they can go to those people. But I just want you guys to know that there is so much more to astrology and it's hard to find it on YouTube, but it's still there. Um, you might be watching this in India and a guy down the street from you might be an amazing Jyotishi who's 10 times better than the person, than me. And then the last five videos of someone you watched on the internet, you know, like, why are you watching me and all these people just, you, you know what I mean? There could be, he could be right there. He could be next door <sighs> or in America too, for that matter. Um, here's another angle of it. The... There's this whole other, there's no qualifications to be an astrologer on YouTube, okay? There are no qualifications. Anyone can just sign up. You can be schizophrenic and you don't have to tell the world that and you just sign up and become an astrologer. I'm not saying that's bad if you're schizophrenic. Um, I've had a wonderful, great close friend who's schizophrenic. Um, 
But I'm just saying, you could have like all kinds of be just a nutcase and be looking for an excuse to boost yourself up on a pedestal to avoid looking at your vulnerabilities so you just can focus on everyone else's so that you never have to really address yourself because you're always projecting on others. Astrology does attract some of those people. Um, and then, you know, they like to give themselves big names too. And I'm sorry, but if you have a name uh, that's not your birth name and it's sort of ostentatious, then I'm never going to, I would never get a reading from someone who had a name like Fuck it, I'm just going to say it. The Leo King, come on. Like, if you want to get a reading from someone, name that. Get what, you'll get what, you get what you want to get. But I just, like, right away, that's sort of meant for other worlds of astrology, you know? So I don't have anything against that guy, and I don't, I don't know him, and I've not met him. And I'm not, I don't know anything, of whether he's done anything unethical or ethical. I just think, wow, okay, interesting. Like, I would never dream of someone with that kind of name looking to them for advice. Like, I would never even picture that as, like, <laughs> something I would do um, but other people will do that they will think gosh I feel so like I'm not good this guy must have all the answers because he's calling himself the Leo King and if you I don't know some I've always just as a skater you, you know you always make fun of people who give themselves nicknames or seem like they gave themselves a nickname um, but you just never know. So maybe maybe that person is like the best astrologer ever and you get the best readings from ever. You just can't know from watching the YouTube channels. You know what I mean? Or, or anything like that. If you get a taste of their company, you can get a little bit of that from, from watching them. So I guess that's true. There's there's some vibe. You get an, an, a feel for them. But... I just want to, I just want to say that you know there's this is how it is and there are very different types of astrologers out there in the world and a lot of the best ones all the most well-known ones don't care whether they are posting things on social media don't care whether they have a YouTube channel or not because you can only get so good at astrology without becoming a really really wise person and knowing the truth of life so if you are really wise and know the truth of life, then you know how much of a waste of time it is to go on Facebook and look for validation there, basically. Or to try to get involved in any sort of popularity contest of any sort. So now it brings me to this whole other side of it. And this is actually the whole reason I want to talk about it, is that there are all these Jyotishis that I learned from 10 years ago or this or that older they're like 50 60 like this guy I was talking about and they're not tech savvy they're not like us millennial people who have been obsessively talking about ourselves focusing on ourselves marketing ourselves me 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 all the time our entire life and so we think it's normal to just always be marketing ourselves but no there are a lot of these older people who are you know yeah maybe in their 60s or 50s or 70s and they're actually still amazing readers and amazing advisors and amazing astrologers but it's kind of like they're just being ignored or they're, they're losing their client base because nobody, everybody just thinks that, oh, well, I just go on YouTube. That's where you go now. And then, okay, the, if they're not on YouTube, they must not be an astrologer. You know what I mean? Or something like that. And so I just feel bad for those people. And, you know, like Saturn, Shani, the elder, he always seems to get neglected a lot when actually he's doing the most service and the most hard work and things. So... You know, maybe there is another older astrologer that you could find, um, you know, that maybe has a website that doesn't look fresh and new and everything, but they might give you an amazing reading compared to someone who's been doing it for like two years and you pay the same amount for that person's reading and you get a really basic generic reading that you could have looked up on the internet yourself or learned from YouTube videos and, uh, yeah, I just think that that's like really kind of depressing. Um, you, I think he got ripped off if that's the case. You know what I mean? Um, you got to, yeah, I just, I know I could name, name names of a lot of like older Vedic astrologers who I feel like are, you know, deserve to have a lot more clients and a lot more validation, but they're just not so tech savvy and mar and millennial-ish. So they aren't, they're sort of not being talked about or forgotten more. Um, and I just don't like to see that. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the, the gist of it. Um, that, that's it. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, these are all some things that I just think you guys should keep in mind. Um, I think you guys should, before you buy a reading from someone, you should ask yourself, how long has this person actually been practicing astrology? 
and like what really you know what are their qualifications or what you know what have they done other than that <clears throat> and then also like even more so maybe with buying courses you know nowadays i feel like there's just a course where on everyone and everything everyone's teaching a, a, a seminar or a course or this or that and they're charging like a lot and it's like okay how long have you worked with this material you know, um, like you should ask the person before you buy that course, oh, um, like you're teaching a course on, on <clears throat> say I'm teaching a course on Charnavamsha. How long have I actually worked with that? You should ask me that. You know what I mean? And if it's just one year or even two years, eh, it depends. Um, one year, I wouldn't take that course. If it's like three years, maybe so. Or if they're a full-time astrologer doing it for two years and that's their only way of making an income, that means that they're doing a lot of readings. Um, like I taught a course on Rahu and K2 this January, and I've been teaching that and working with that for like seven years. So I could speak off the top of my head about it in the course. I didn't need to refer back to anyone, else, any other teacher's manuals or anything. It just came out. And I just, everyone liked that. And I just thought, gosh, that's how it should be. I'm not going to teach a course that I'm not able to teach by memory, you know, by rote, by heart, that I don't know by heart. Because that's, to me, that's like what we're doing here. <laughs> we're trying to get closer to that and that truth and wisdom. So anyways, um, these are all just some things to think about. Uh, I don't mean anything negative to anybody or anyone and because uh, I have nothing but love here. And this, this video is just for the purpose of that, of bringing more, uh, bringing more goodness into the world of astrology and having us Think about these things and as like a consumer or a person who's watching all these videos. You know, it's just something you should think about. Okay.